everyone, I'm just going to do a video today uh, trying to explain how I actually fed the hydrogen, or in this case HHO, to the engine you just saw in that video. Um, first off, uh, when using HHO in an engine, uh, you don't want any extra uh, air going into the engine. Um, it might work with some people, but for the most case, this isn't the case. Uh, that is obviously because hydrogen or HHO has its own uh, oxygen to burn, which is this one here. And we've already got the two hydrogens here. So when it comes to feeding it into the engine, you don't want any more oxygens going in, because then that's obviously going to dilute the hydrogen. Also, if you're trying to feed more oxygen into the engine, uh, the chances are you're going to actually lose the hydrogen in the process. So this, what I'm about to explain now, is really a general rule of thumb for any engine. Uh, but in this case it's for the GX160 and the 200 models. Uh, so if you've used these engines or you have one of these engines, this will make perfect sense to you. Uh, but it's very, very simple. So as you can see here, we've got the intake side of the engine, you get your piston, your intake valve, that's obviously going to be opening and closing. And usually here, you'll have the carburetor, which will usually mix the petrol and the air together to give the right uh, air fuel ratio. But with HHO, we don't need this. So essentially, all we need to do is somehow block this off here, and then feed the hydrogen in. Uh, if you're using pure hydrogen, you'll need extra oxygen for it to burn. But like I said earlier, this already has its oxygen. So we literally just need to feed HHO in there without it being blocked. So I've gone ahead and drawn this here, which is essentially the method I used for feeding the HHO into the engine. So if you look at one of these engines, I'm not sure if it's with every engine, every small engine, this is a generator engine. You find them in go-karts, stuff like that, but the throttle, the carburetor is here. And you'll have a small plastic plate, which is in between the actual carburetor and the engine. I'm not sure what this plate's for. I think it's something to do with the carburetor and its function. Uh, we don't really need this, but uh, I kept it in there because it was the perfect size for what I needed and I'm sure you'd find the same. Uh, so you keep that on. These are the studs that come out of the engine which usually hold the carburetor on. So we're going to use them to our advantage and you, I used a plastic washer, a HHO flashback arrester and some sort of plate to hold it all together. So I used the plastic washer here, this is a side on view. Uh, the reason why I use a plastic washer is because if you use a metal washer, uh, they have lots of, lots of uh, irregularities and it's, they aren't 100% smooth. And also with a plastic one, when it's under pressure, which is what we were applying a pressure here against it, uh, it will somewhat make it airtight. Not 100% airtight, but we aren't going for 100% efficiency here, otherwise we wouldn't be using this gas. So. It's not, it's not the end of the world. So we've got the washer there. The reason why we're using the washer is because the size difference between the gap on the plastic and the actual flashback arrest that I used, which I'd recommend. If you can't find it, by all means, send me an email. I'll try and send you a link back. You can buy them in America, these flashback arrestors. Um, and they aren't expensive. They are not expensive at all. So we used the washer to gap the difference between the arista and the plastic plate here. Otherwise, the flashback arista would just fall straight into the cylinder area, the intake port. So that's gapping the size difference. So now this flashback arista can sit nicely against there. And this is an inline resistor where you have usually a push fitting here and a push fitting there. So that, can, that spout can sit nicely in the middle. But then obviously it's not going to be fastened down or anything, it's going to be loose. So I use the retaining block, which is literally just a block with a hole 
in the middle so the spout can fit through and the whole two holes to mount on the engine studs here that usually hold the carburetor on. But as we aren't using the carburetor, this can slide over those studs, use two nuts to retain it in place. This plate now, which you see in pink, is going to be pushing pressure against the flashback of Vista, which is going to be pushing against the washer, causing somewhat of an airtight seal here and here. You'll keep the um, gasket that originally came with the engine, keep the gasket in place, might as well. And then at the back here, to control the actual hydrogen feed, we're going to need, which is only run, it's only governed by pressure at this point, because um, usually you have a balloon that's feeding the pressure in. Uh, and every time the engine cycles and it's going down, the valve opens and it's just sucking in this area. It's going to be drawing hydrogen through, and then the valve shuts and it's no longer sucking. So, we need to control the amount of hydrogen going through, the less hydrogen, the less hydrogen, less HHO, sorry, that's going into this area, the less it's going to get into the pot, into the cylinder, and obviously it's going to be combusted. So, if we have less, less speed, more, uh, more HHO is going to have more, more uh, engine speed, more combustion. Another reason why I use a plastic one, actually, is uh, you get a lot of flashbacks in this area. Uh, this valve, these engines are cheap. The one I used was a um, was a Honda clone, so it's it's not even a Honda engine, and it worked fine. But you have to lap the valves just to make sure they are 100 percent what better tight, airtight than um, when it was standard. Um, but you can get a lot of gas seeping through the explosion as it combusts in here. There was some left in here, some of the gas that hasn't gone into the engine. That will blast through and explode in this area as well. And you can see if that's happening with a plastic washer as you will see the flash coming through. Um, which lets you know that you are getting backfire. Another problem with the backfire with these engines, uh, and actually another lot of videos, like I said earlier, where you see people adding more oxygen into the system, like uh, putting the hydrogen feed into the carburetor originally. They're either fake videos or um, they're using very high pressure, um, or it's just pure hydrogen and it's not actually HHO. Um, it, it, if you do that and you have the pipe going in and the flashback of Vista, somewhere near your your bubbler or your where your generator is for the HHO, any backfire is going to travel from here, it's going to travel down your pipe all the way to your washback arista that's over here, which means on the next engine cycle there's not going to be any hydrogen there because it's not going to travel in time to get to there, which is a problem I found. Um, so by actually having the flashback arista butted up against the engine any backfire that happens, it's instantaneously replaced, um, which is allowing the engine to uh, cycle still, because there's still fuel there for it to burn. So that's essentially it with this uh, design. It's very, very simple. It works. It's very primitive. But essentially all it is is a plastic washer, a flashback arista, and some sort of retaining block with a ball valve to govern the flow of hydrogen going into the engine. Uh, if this gets hot, you, obviously it's another sign that it is backfiring um, but they can um, they can operate under high temperature anyway so that's usually not an issue um, but if it starts getting too hot to touch then you need to sort out your valves or you're pumping too much hydrogen into the system so um, that's something just to remember there okay thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video i'll uh, see you again soon